Hey everyone, my name is Japanese Import. While today I may be known for making skill cap videos, being a challenger jungler, ragging on Hector, or sometimes just inting games like him, at one point I was starting out on my ranked journey. I know what it's like to painfully have to climb through every elo and figure out the game from square one. Fast forward to today, and now I've got a decade of experience under my belt and 5,000 plus hours coaching all the roles in the game. I personally know what it's like to play at every level and have also helped thousands of players escape their own elos. Now I want to give advice to everyone to help avoid the struggles that my students and I went through and give you good goals and things to work on to advance to the next level. While the advice today will be targeted towards players of specific ranks to give them the most bang for their buck, everyone will benefit from watching even ranks that aren't their own, as these concepts all build onto one another. With that said, let's get right into it. So you've just gotten into ranked, or maybe you've not had the greatest start. To get out, we shouldn't worry about just winning games or abusing OP strategies. We can do that with time. The most important thing to do is learn the fundamentals. Iron and Bronze players should focus on building habits and mechanics that will persist throughout their time with the game. For example, something that's completely repeatable every game is jungle clearing. If we look at just the difference between silver and diamond jungle clears, not even iron versus challenger, you can see just how crazy the difference is. This was in a controlled environment without leashes, and the diamond player is consistently up 20 seconds of time, if not more, every time. If we look at the difference between my clears and some diamond players, I'm even beating them by 10 seconds and clears that aren't even all of the camps. Basically, if we think about the difference between clear speed of an iron or bronze player and compare it to challenger, it can sometimes be 50 seconds or more in just one clear. The thing is, is that this is one of the easiest skills in the game to master, but it just takes some time and practice tool to figure it out. If you're willing to go in and do the work now, you can easily be beating even diamond players in clear speed, as someone who is ranked way lower than them. If you master your clears, this means that every game, you'll just be starting off with 30 seconds of time that the other person doesn't get. It's always useful to know how to clear, and it's one of the biggest things that holds low elo players back. At the same time, it's one of the easiest ways to just get an advantage for free. Other things you want to focus on are building habits that will pay off later down the line. You're new enough into your ranked journey that it's not as hard to unlearn and relearn things. If you give it another three years of making the same mistakes over and over again, it gets pretty difficult to retrain your brain or your muscle memory, so best to do it now. Some key things to fix are getting used to unlocked camera and using F keys. Using some of the other bindings like target champions only or attack moving are just all good things to get used to. It's not super important that you use them optimally yet, but get yourself accustomed to it and you'll thank me later. If you don't do this now, you'll just have to do it eventually. The last thing is to one trick, or only play a handful of champions. There is way too much in this game to learn. The worst thing you can do is purposely give yourself more matchups, builds, and combos to worry about. Keep it simple for now, and expand your champion pool later when you've got a good grasp on the things that don't change regardless of what champion you lock in. After you've built up habits and repeatable fundamentals, it's time to expand on those ideas and start working on solving problems that you might not have seen before. Let's work on our decision making. Let me show you an example of me smurfing in silver, gold, elo, and you'll see just how players fail in this regard all the time here. At the start of the game, I invade Lee Sin's red side with the idea of taking away his camps. I managed to sneak away the raptors, and right after I grab his red. Of course, Lee Sin probably has no idea at this point that I'm doing this, but I'm about to do something that lets him know for sure. Immediately after, I gank top. Right here, Lee Sin should have all the info he needs to figure out what to do. He sees I'm coming from his side of the map, he can see I have a red buff and no blue buff, and if he's really good, he presses tab to see I have 8 CS, which means I took his raptors in red. Here's the thing. About 10 seconds go by, and Lee Sin shows on my ward walking into his topside jungle. I don't blame him for this, but it does perfectly illustrate an issue at this level of play. He had plenty of time to shift course when he saw me top, and he could have easily just ran from his bot side to my jungle and taken my red to counteract my play, all without ever showing on my ward. However, most silver players tend to have very rigid play patterns. What I mean by this is that they always do the same clear, they always start on the same side of the map, they always build the same thing, and so on. Maybe you're not guilty of all of these, but chances are there's something that you don't adapt to do, you just do it because you're used to it. It's likely that this Lee Sin has always done this clear, and never tried anything else. He never ever considered that it wouldn't be the best thing to do in this situation, he just did it. 
but he should have realized that his usually solid route became terrible due to the game state. Because he recognized this too late, I see him on this ward and see him walking down. Now I can just recall run to my red after buying a long sword and fight him. I get my red and kill him. It's safe to say his game is just really doomed now. There's a big difference between what Lee did where he autopiloted and only turned it off after getting to his top side versus making an active decision to go to his top side even though he knew I was there already. If he made an active choice, he would have done something else besides just backpedal all the way to bottom. The main idea is to work on building up your skill of conscious choice. To do this, we need to always consider more than one option at a time. Thinking of at least two things you can do at any point is a good start, and it'll keep you on your toes when something unexpected happens. We're not worried about always picking the right choice or having the most optimal answer. Just like I mentioned before, we're focusing on building habits that will last us. You should start training your brain now to analyze two options, so that eventually, if you're playing at a challenger level and need to think of seven at once in real time, you've already got a lot of practice doing it and have worked your way up to more and more options over time. Another thing, we don't want to autopilot, but we do want to train pattern recognition. When we see a similar situation a lot of times and test a bunch of options out, we get a feel for what works best. If you never try new things, it gets really hard to learn because the outcome never changes. Thinking of two options will always give you another thing to keep testing, and right now, we just need more ideas and options in our bag of tricks. We'll worry about what's correct later. So you've made it to gold, what a lot of players view as the final destination or the promised land for ranked rewards. But you want to go higher. Let's do that. Gold is where we have to start putting some serious thought into our expectations versus the reality we receive. Essentially, it's just Economics 101. Here is where we have to start factoring and weighing some weird concepts like opportunity cost, optimizing our options to make the most money, and optimizing time and recalls. We should be used to thinking about more than one option by now, so we have to start asking which one of our options is better than the other, and why. We need some way of quantifying what's good and what's bad, which means we have to start seriously considering how much, for instance, a dragon is worth, or a rift herald, or taking those three jungle camps from the enemy's quadrant. Sometimes we can literally say that I get this amount of gold from the stats it gives me, or the XP I gain can be turned into a gold value, or Rift Herald just gives us gold from plates. But all these things come at the cost of time, and an abstract thing like that is hard to measure. Yet to get better at this game, we have to ask the question, is it worth our time to do any of this stuff? Let's take a look at a game that one of my students, Yabbles, played recently. We've worked a lot on him getting very strong early games and teaching how to just punish people and get leads. Because of this, he's pretty prone to getting ahead early, and sometimes throwing it come mid-game. After this kill, he has 1200 gold. That's enough for a very large item spike, especially at this point in the game. But he goes to clear his bot side camps and then finds Nautilus low enough to dive. After picking up a freebie here, he gets to do even more. He runs mid yet again and ends up doing some relatively fancy Lee Sin things to secure a kill. Then he goes to red and heads towards top to try his hand at ganking Volibear. Okay, so some of you might be getting the feeling of, wow, that's a lot of stuff, four ganks on the same recall. And yeah, you're right. The problem is that not once during this did Yabbles think to himself, hmm, maybe I've been on map too long and I need to recall so I can spend all of my gold and not give a thousand gold shutdown away. He even opted to risk it for the biscuit once again by starting Rift Herald before he even knew where the enemy jungler was. If the enemy jungler had been, for a lack of better words, actually playing the game, he would have tried very hard to punish the fact that Lee Sin is sitting on a lot of its strength and not actually cashing it out yet. In gold, you may get away with it, but in higher elos, this will be punished. This is like having all your money in stocks and then the stock market crashes, or something like that. I don't know, not the best analogy. The point is, is that recalling and staying up to your true power level often is very important when it comes to winning games. You may have 3,500 gold, but if you only spent 1,100 of it, you're just as strong as the guy that only has 1,100 gold too. Everyone wants to run to every play they see, but with every second passing on the map without buying, you get weaker and weaker relative to the rest of the game. You get to play a lot worse and still win when you have a full gore drinker at 7 minutes versus an iron spike whip. You can flub mechanically and it won't matter at all because your stats will just carry you. It may feel bad to leave the map when you're on a roll like this, but mitigating risk and starting to assess the value of spending time to recall early and other similar concepts is huge for improvement. Just like before, we don't need to worry that much about finding the perfect play. We just want to try and optimize what options we're picking. We can slowly make our choices better and better, and train our brains to keep thinking about the value of certain things. 
When you can do this, you will shortly find yourself in a higher rank. We've done a good deal of thinking about what we should be doing, but now we need to think about the fact that we're only one fifth of our team. You've probably dealt with enough inters at this point that you couldn't avoid doing that already, but let's just learn how to lane as a jungler. Spending all our time learning one piece of the puzzle that is League has gotten you to Platinum, but now we need to learn the other pieces. Jungling and laning are two sides of the same coin. They need to help each other to succeed. If you don't know what your laners need to do to win their lanes, how can you possibly know what to do in order to help them win? Likewise, how can you set them up to help you, or even know when they actually can or not? So many times junglers will ping for help or contest crabs, dragons, and other objectives that they have no business contesting just because they don't know what their laners actually want to do. Things like lane priority, reset timers for laners, wave management, all these are skills that we need to develop our understanding of now. There is going to be give and take. Things that are good for you might not be good for your laners, and vice versa. We have to stop thinking about what's good for us and start worrying about what's good for the overall game state, teammates included. As much as I wish we didn't need them, we do. Even pros can't legitimately 1v5 a game. Some of the value of high-level plays like this come from your team getting very far ahead as a whole. Lee Sin actually dies in this clip and personally doesn't get as much as he could by going somewhere else, like taking the enemy's jungle camps. But because of how lanes work, the bot lane is just insanely far ahead off of it. They get to take a ton of tower plates, they set up a wave pushing back to them for the freeze, and they deny the enemy ADC an absolute ton of gold, experience, and overall make her future laning experience miserable. It's at this point that I will actually recommend playing mid or some other lane, whether it's just in norms, on a smurf, or flex queue. Any amount of stepping into someone else's shoes is good for you. It will relieve a lot of frustration when you start to realize why people can't just move to every play, because you won't want to help your jungler when you're playing a lane either. Making sacrifices for others feels like you're missing out sometimes, but just in real life, the payoff can be very worth it. If you can develop a good understanding of laning, goals, and fundamentals, it can help you deliver ganks that are incredibly punishing to the enemy and hit them where it really hurts. You get more value when you know when to push or freeze a wave, when to gank for maximum effect, and when to invade when it works for your laners and not just for you. Teamwork really does make the dream work. Diamond Plus, either a cesspool or the actual promised land depending on how you look at it. This is where we really learn how to break the rules. Up until this point, you've hopefully learned enough to start to understand what ideal plays should be. In no way will you be perfect, but you're approaching the point where you're on track or you get it right most of the time. A lot of players hit a wall here because they simply do not understand what to do in order to get better. There are two main ways around this. We've spent all this time developing a decision-making system that works for us. Now it's time to relearn everything we ever learned and learn what works for other people too. Because your fundamentals are good enough at this point, you should start watching VODs of players that are better than you. Challenger OTPs, pro players, faker, whoever. When you're watching their games, act as if you were playing. Think about what you would do given the information that they have. Anytime they choose something that isn't the same as what you would do, try to figure out why. There's no one correct way of playing League of Legends, but versatility and adapting is the only way to overcome this elo. People are good enough that we can't just get free kills every game, and converting leads actually gets hard. If we can steal decision making skills and learn what other good players value, we will improve our decision making system much more quickly. Unfortunately, this really only works when you can get to the why behind things that you watch, which is why this isn't an effective strategy until you've hit a relatively high elo and high level of understanding. The second way to improve from here is to learn how to deal with whatever your team gives you. Five players will rarely agree on the right play. It's not worth worrying about what the correct play is when your goal now is to just win. You need to be someone that unites plays together. A suboptimal play can turn into something great when multiple people follow it and work with what they have. Being stuck in the past and worrying about how plays could have gone is a very common issue. At this point, players tend to overanalyze when really all they need to do is think about how they can perform better in the present to increase the odds of winning. Worry about the analysis and the correct play after the game when you're reviewing your VODs, which if you've made it to here, I sure hope you're doing by now. Trying to force the correct play when no one is in position to follow it makes it quote unquote bad. You will be playing wrong to do the right thing. Solo queue is chaos and expecting it to look like pro play is just setting yourself up for failure. You need to think of plays as a whole now. Where does everyone on my team need to be? 
What resources did they need to have before we execute? Are all the cogs working in the machine? No longer can we just think of us, or maybe one other person in addition. You need to know macro for everyone on your team, and when it's not correct, know how to play around it. As a final note, the biggest advice for any rank is to just keep being hungry to learn. None of us truly understand the game perfectly, and when we can come to peace with the fact that we don't always know the correct play, or the correct build, or how to be the perfect player, it's a lot easier to improve. Don't let ego get in the way of learning. Thinking you understand something is the fastest way to not understand it at all. Now, what you find here on YouTube is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to unlock your true potential, then you need to dive into skillcap.com. We have the largest catalog of League of Legends guides in the entire world, with over 1,500 guides and 350 unique courses. You get brand new guides every week exclusive to our website, along with our Smurf commentaries where our challenger experts walk you through how to carry out of the exact rank you're stuck in. Still unsure? Well, you can have all your questions answered by those same challenger experts. Need one-on-one -on -one coaching? We got you covered with hand-picked coaches trained to the highest standard. Don't have time for that? Use Direct Pro, pick a past game you played, and within 24 hours get a personalized video from a top 100 challenger player breaking down exactly what you can do better. The best part? All of this comes with a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching and we'll, we'll see you next time.